Dr. Louis, so um, let's talk about the orchestra there, the Cape Town um, Philharmonic. Um, it's a Cape Town Philharmonic Orchestra. Petra, thank you. We, in a very unique position, mm -hmm. uh, we, I suppose, if you're on, uh, an orchestra on the southern tip of Africa, you have to, you, you can't be an orchestra in America or Europe. You have to do some things different. Um, our main difference is that a third of our funds goes towards the transfer of skills. So we've got a, quite a few youth orchestras that we have to keep busy in the youth academy, and they all do it by mentoring with the, the, the orchestra members. They work also as uh, in a teaching capacity, not official teachers, but in an ensemble playing and they help and they, they, they show them around. And uh, we've had tremendous success with our youth, or youth ensembles and youth orchestras. But our main core business is still being a, a, a multifunctional orchestra. Because in Cape Town, we play for opera, we play for ballet, we play all the symphony concerts, um, and we, uh, we play commercial light, lighter music concerts, uh, sometimes outdoor concerts with the orchestra. Um, for the city and for all the people. And in a country like South Africa, you have to cater for everybody. Um, we cannot afford several orchestras uh, on different levels, uh, like a, a famous city like uh, uh, Vienna. Um, although there's a lot of work, uh, we can only uh, have full-time positions for one orchestra, basically. There's mm. some some uh, freelance uh, uh, musicians uh, that make a living by teaching and playing in other ensembles. And there's a lot of chamber music as well, but all the main orchestra work is done by us in Cape Town. Um, uh, we, we can't employ everybody full time. We have a core orchestra and then we have around about 50, 60 uh, professionals that we hire in as ad hoc players on a regular okay. basis. Mm. Yeah. So how big um, is this orchestra? How many members do you have, full-time members? Full-time, about 50. Yeah. Um, but for instance, we have a couple of harp players in, available in Cape Town. Mm. We don't use a harp every every week. So it's, yeah. it's, it's not economically uh, feasible for us to have, a, say, a harp player full-time, and mm. we only use that person uh, once a month, mm. uh, because if I say full time, they get a salary. Uh, mm. They uh, there's a lot of rules and regulations in terms of the salary. They get a, a retirement annuity. There's risk policy, uh, medical aid. Everything is included. Mm. So it's it's just not feasible, unfortunately, uh, mm. to to have more than just double when say two clarinets, two flutes. Um, we had, do have three trumpets, but so it's just a basic orchestra, and that okay. that totals about fifty. But for most of the concerts that we, when you play Rachmaninoff or, or, or bigger romantic works, Mahler or or Tchaikovsky, obviously uh, we play as a as an orchestra of about sixty five, and mm -hmm. we've done bigger works. We've we've once did an Electra. We had one hundred and seventeen players on stage. Oh wow! But that was yeah. some time ago. We, we, yeah. It's difficult and quite expensive. Without mm. funding, special funding, you can't do that. Mm. Do you have a, um, a, a? Is there a, a specific? So you play. I mean, mostly classical music, I suppose. But um, is there room for, say, more traditional music, or do you incorporate that, or uh, how do you how do you get? to all the audiences that you have in South Africa? That is one of the major problems. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we've, we've uh, I would say about uh, 75 to 85%, because it changed from year to year, of all the young players uh, in our youth orchestras are people of color. Mm -hmm. um, not that, and, and they play classical music. But of course, there's also their traditional music, and um, you cannot just take any kind of traditional music uh, from, say, an African culture and expect that to be perfectly orchestrated. That is yeah. something, well, we can get back to that later. 
but we have a responsibility uh, to use the normal methods of teaching people in Western mm -hmm. uh, notation and Western skills. Um, and one of the things that we, the big changes that we're working on constantly is to change our audiences. Because um, it's no use, we have wonderful young players of color in the orchestra, but our audiences are totally white. Yeah. That has been the case until quite recently, say 15, 20 years ago. It's changing now. I think one of the methods we use is by all these youngsters from townships and all, all over playing in orchestras. And really, they now that they get opportunities, mm -hmm. all the opportunities that they didn't have uh, those many years ago, they excel. They're wonderful. They, they're really talented. And of course, that is very often a way out of the township a way out of poverty for them and they work hard and they're really talented and of course when they play a concert in, a, uh, in an overture or a pre-program we, we sort of call it a curtain raiser for a symphony concert mm -hmm. once every quarter or their, their their parents and their family and friends come for the first time to the concert and mm -hmm. then we change that pattern so uh, subtly it's a you know we uh, we need to be part of the uh, social structure of of the city mm -hmm of an African city, uh, we need to be, uh, to show that uh, it's a world, classical music is a world culture. We all can be part of that. The next step would, would be that we have to be inclusive of African composers and um, not superficially have music from all those different cultures, just orchestrated for a Western orchestra, but to incorporate that. You know, everybody in the world, is, is, all the uh, big orchestras in the world do pop music and, and they play a little bit crossover. It's very popular. We do it as well. We've been doing it for, for decades, very successfully, because you need to enlarge your, your um, audience. Uh, we cannot play for anymore for a small elite group of people uh, and just concentrating on that because the funding will not be there. And of course, if we get public funding like we get from the, our the Western Cape government and a little bit and, uh, and a substantial amount from the city of Cape Town, we have to be an orchestra of the city by the, uh, by the people, uh, for the people. Uh, so we have that obligation to create a forum for music from all sorts. So I always say we're, a, yes, we're a symphony orchestra, but we're a multifunctional orchestra. We play for ballet, we play for opera, we play light music, we're involved in the skills transfer, um, and that creates quite a lot of challenges in terms of funding for us. Mm. Yeah, but I think it's very interesting that you say you have this outreach program or this youth, the youth orchestra, where you have then um, young people coming and and they don't pay they don't have to pay a fee to to uh, no, be that's, that's very important that yeah. it's totally free and uh, uh, they not that they come and go but it, it must be free because they have to have the opportunity to develop themselves yeah. and if we get funding from um, uh, from an official organization uh, that's where the money goes and we have to prove that we 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 uh, you see, social cohesion in a country like South Africa is extremely important. And um, through sport, there's a lot being done in South Africa through sport, mm -hmm. because there's such a lot of political upheaval uh, in a country with, that's changing all the time. Uh, and um, that has, has to play the catch-up game. And it will take a couple of generations. We don't have to fool ourselves. It won't happen overnight. But on a, on a uh, cultural and musical um, uh, front, we can do a lot to, to help and create social cohesion. Mm. And that's very important for us. And I, uh, I'm very proud of what we've done over a mm. long period of time. And, um, but of course, it's you're only as good as us yesterday. You have to do it all the time. Mm. And with, with the pandemic now, there was lots of new challenges for us. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I've spoken to some uh, opera singers uh, from South Africa who come from, uh, you know, small townships where they sang in the choir and this, this, the fact that they could sing in the choir was this, 
way where they got to to um, learn or, or to know about the music and to get the inspiration and the love for the music. And um, this is something that I feel in, in South Africa, and I've spoken to Ben Skuman as well about this, that there's so much talent in South Africa, but that the opportunities are not always there. And that these, these children who come from the, from the very small townships and, and, and not even just the townships, but very small towns in South Africa, you know, that they not always have the means to um, have music education or, uh, you know, buy instruments and things like that. So I think this is wonderful that they have this opportunity to be part of an orchestra and, and have that, like you say, uh, a different life uh, than, than what they would have had. Petra, I, well, maybe this is controversial, but I think um, I can easily say that I, I believe Cape Town is the mecca um, of uh, opera, black opera singers. And it's been for, uh, like that for quite a few years. Um, I mean, it's not only Pretty Indian, there's a lot of singers from all of, from South Africa that came to the opera school here in Cape Town. It happens to be a very good school. And they do a lot of operas every year and they've got good training. And, um, and, they, and there was one stage, I think, uh, just before the, the year before the pandemic, pandemic was about 2019, there was one, and one year that there were four singers from here in that year singing in the Met in New York. Now, oh, um, yeah. that, that's fantastic. Now, mm. a couple of very good singers are making good careers in Europe at the moment. Pretty Indy, of course, is the one that everybody knows, and she's, mm. um, we gave her the first opportunity, uh, well, actually, up Cape Town Opera, but she sang with us for the first time. And uh, uh, she was one of the lucky ones. Many of the singers that have careers, they would love to come back to South Africa and to come and mm -hmm. sing here. But the opportunities, as you've said, is not here at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a bit of opera being done in, in the other cities, in, in, in Johannesburg and Pretoria, but not a big official opera company. And then if case, case Cape Town. Cape Town ca cannot do operas and, and repertoire like you do in Vienna with, mm -hmm. um, with so many uh, seasons every year and uh, in one week you can see four or five different operas in repertory that just goes on. We have to do one uh, uh, production, uh, rehearse it and work on it and then we have three or four performances and that's it and then we move on to the next one. So they can they can manage a couple of things uh, but we've done kept on opera company have uh, has done quite a lot of interesting productions. Um, in the 70s, we could do sort of, you know, we were uh, and and um, the Rosen Cavalier and things like that. Uh, those bigger productions uh, at the moment, although there's always talks of, of a ring in Cape Town, is not is not for us at the moment. But they do interesting uh, work, uh, mm. uh, smaller kind of things and on smaller scale. Uh, mm. We last week had a quite difficult. Um, uh, situation, we socially distance, we cannot fit more than about 40 uh, in the pit orchestra pit. And we did, um, we opened with um, the pearl fishers. And um, after the final dress rehearsal on last Monday, one, I want clarinet player tested, she got sick and she was tested positive the next day. Of course, the whole orchestra goes in quarantine. So we have to postpone all the, un, until the 10 days of the whole orchestra in quarantine, to wait 10 days before. And then of course, then the theater is not available uh, whenever we want to. So it's a very, very difficult puzzle at the moment uh, if, if something happens. But in general, to get back to your question, it's mm. very difficult for people to, uh, to to get trained here with fantastic voices. We just had a, another winner at the Cardiff Singer of the World. Oh, I uh, saw, yeah. This, um, mm. this Cecilia got um, uh, the, she was, got the award for leader. I think she sang Strauss and even mm. uh, Esther Rumare, Afrikaans song and so on. Um, uh, Levi uh, Sachepane uh, got the uh, Operalia one, uh, Pretty wonderful opera. We really have wonderful singers, but there's not opportunity to come back. 
they would have thought now that they they've sang on all the great stages of Europe at least, we would invite them back all the time for seasons. But there's no opportunity for them. Mm. We have three or four operas per year and a few performances of each. Mm. Yeah, that is that is uh, really sad to think about that that they have to leave to uh, to make a career or to uh, yeah. But tell me now, in, in during the lockdown, um, how did the orchestra function? Did you have a lot of rehearsals? Did you uh, in could the, you continue in, the, in a way? In the initial lockdown, the heavy what I call the heavy yeah. lockdown, yeah. level five. Of course, we you could only go. We were totally well, not totally different to Europe, but I mean, Europe people had to sit in their little flats in bad weather. We still had good weather, and we could go out. Uh, to the shop, was, um, it was slightly different here. Uh, so psychologically, it was not so bad. You could go out, out in your garden, and you can drive whatever you like, but we couldn't be more than uh, a couple of people at any time. And, and we were sort of urged to stay home most of the time. So we immediately started, obviously we, we cut our salaries. Uh, we, we negotiated with all the orchestra members and salaries were cut at different levels, but up to 30%. And that's, you know, uh, to have your salary cut for 14 months, you'll never catch up, you never can get it back. We've given them a little raise now after 14 months, but it, it's, it's a big chunk out of your income. But they all accepted very uh, appreciative that they still have the opportunity to work full time. And we started immediately with um, online teaching and then, of course, um, with uh, giving them uh, doing projects that they recorded themselves on their cell phones, on their smartphones, mm -hmm. and then to send in. Uh, and it was mixed and edited into one piece. Oh, yeah. You saw on, on YouTube, everybody yeah, did yeah, that. For yeah, yeah. We did that for quite a few. We and we timed our specific things uh, to with. Uh, it, it was not just at random. We very um, yeah. um, carefully chose works that we did. One of the, I mean, then we, uh, as soon as possible, we started getting uh, um, uh, uh, Alexander Gilman, a solist mm -hmm. that comes in, a violent solist from London. He's actually Swiss, uh, mm -hmm. Russian origin. He played with us and, and we said, okay, we've done a recording here in Cape Town uh, a couple of years ago who got a, a golden tapes on door um, in, in Europe, uh, very successful. He played the Barber and Gordon Gold concertos with us. Um, in a in a record a very successful recording and said well come and play with us we will record it and give you a click track and then you do something manageable oh, yeah. um, like the uh, Tahis uh, temptation up uh, from Tahis um, mm. which can work because you listen to a click track on your ear and uh, you play with and then it was all mixed together and there we performed uh, in two continents. Oh, then wow. we thought, for instance, yeah. we did another project, our um, uh, principal cellist uh, mm -hmm. worked with one of his friends who is the leader of the uh, Mozarteum Orchestra in Salzburg mm -hmm. and also with a, a pianist in, in uh, Colorado that mm -hmm. happened to work in a couple of years here in South Africa. And they did the Beethoven Triple Concerto on three continents. Mm -hmm. uh, all done. That's not Zoom. It's something similar. They they uh, yeah. wonder, They recorded the, the piano part. It was it's the Rheinberger, um, was it Reinecke? I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, 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 triple concerto of Beethoven uh, arranged for piano trio, so cello, mm -hmm. violin, piano, and um, a very nice and attractive piece and uh, excellently done. Uh, but not all that often performed. So they laid down the first track on uh, and edited finally the, of, of the piano because piano gives sort of the uh, has got the kind of the bass recording. It plays yeah. most of the time. And then um, they would send it here and electronically you watch on the television or, or, or on your computer, you put headphones on, you listen to it and you play with. And they experimented a little bit and then they did a recording. 
and we enrolled in the South African online festival, um, the Klein Career Classic, and oh, we won okay. we won an award for it. Uh, so we did oh, all interesting yeah. things. That is available now on YouTube. You can just uh, say uh, I will, to yeah. um, uh, Peter Martens and um, uh, it was his, his initiative, our, our cellist, mm -hmm. and uh, you will very easily find it on, on, done on three continents. Um, yeah. It actually is it worked well, and it showed that um, even with using modern technology, you can do things. It's not yeah. the same live performance, but mm -hmm. the okay. idea was last year when we did it that. Oh, 2021, 2021 will open up and we'll, everything will be normal again. The, the pandemic will be over and we will invite the two sailors from America and, and Salzburg and they will come and do the real thing um, sort of together with the orchestra. Of course, that didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's still some time. Before. We will still do it. But you will do it. Yeah, but, but we will do it eventually. Yeah. Yes. But I think it, this is amazing because I've I, I've spoken also to ballet dancers and they have also said that a lot of these um, concerts were streamed and, and were recorded and, and like you say these these projects that people did with with uh, I don't know what what the, the app is that they did it with, but it's also these little blocks no. with everybody playing but I think it's wonderful because now you've reached audiences outside South Africa and you could connect in a way with other musicians yes. as well and what is so amazing is what we don't realize is that when these things are on YouTube they are there forever and I've actually heard a, um, a podcast where somebody says that um, sometimes even videos as old as five six years keep rotating through YouTube and I think isn't it amazing to think that in three or four years' time, these videos will still be watched, we, you know? There was a South African piece of music by a, uh, an artist. Uh, it's called Jerusalem, and it became sort of like a hit. Oh, yeah. World. Everybody danced on the Jerusalem. So we decided we're going to do get a local jazz art. Jazz art is a local modern dance company, and yeah. we're going to do it on stage. So we used... The Jerusalem as a click track, and we yeah. play and we got it orchestrated for the whole orchestra. There's lots mm -hmm. of brass and everything with it, and we got the the I think it was about twelve dancers of jazz art. They did dancing on stage, and um, we did it for a concert that we will have on television now as well mm -hmm. during the lockdown, not the heavy lockdown, but the yeah. in between lockdown, and but we used that as a promotional trailer on YouTube. And, mm -hmm. and we've had two million views, and for a South African classical music wow. endeavor from an orchestra in Cape Town mm -hmm. um, to get two million views on YouTube or more than two million, it's unheard yeah. of. Yeah. But, uh, so it shows you there they are. Mm -hmm. There's nothing to replace live music in a concert, but yeah. we had to use alternatives, and it worked for us very mm -hmm. well. I think in I think in a way it is um, also uh, uh, you know reaching audiences that say in South Africa for example uh, reaching audiences that might not have come but now you know the the seed is planted or yeah. they are a bit yeah. more inquisitive yeah. and and I think there was so much time that people spent online and that they spent you know on YouTube. Because that, uh, that I've also heard that the viewings on YouTube have gone up so much. And it's because, so I think in, in a way, uh, it's a little blessing in the skies that we had the, the possibility we, of the online concerts. During all our concerts, we call it a cyber symphony series. Uh, yeah. All our concerts are, are cyber concerts at the moment. Mm. Uh, because we, again, from last week, we back to the lockdown to 50 maximum mm -hmm. people or fifth number of people in one venue. Mm -hmm. So if we have 50 in the orchestra, uh, the week before it was 100, so yeah. we could do bigger concert, but that means we cannot have an audience. Um, mm -hmm. We have nine cameras and we got better and better and better with the editing. We do a little interview uh, with the artists. Uh, mm -hmm at the same time and then we edit it into a concert so we've got these virtual concerts 
since the beginning of the year of all our concerts. And um, we couldn't, because of the, of the lockdown, most of the overseas soloists and conductors visiting could not come to Cape Town. So, but in a strange way, that was a, um, one of our mandates is we have to create a platform for South African artists. Mm. So all the, the soloists uh, in South Africa uh, have to com usually have to compete against the best from overseas. Oh, yes. We really mm -hmm. get the top artists coming here. Not, and if they're not the top, they just on the second on the second tier, uh, because we we really the really big names we cannot afford because of the rand do, uh, mm -hmm. uh, dollar and euro exchange rate. But we do get fantastic artists, and in a way, it's unfair for the local artists, um, mm -hmm. apart from a, a couple of. of ones with, that are really on an international level uh, to compete with these. But now for the last 14 months, we've only been using local artists and gave them the platform to perform their concertos with the orchestra. And it worked well for us. Yeah. But yeah. as you know, it will never replace um, the live concerts. The, one of the other things that, that is problematic for us, of course, we, we have worked differently to European orchestras. I think a larger part of their income comes from the box office. Mm. Only about 20%, because we're a multifunctional orchestra, we do a lot of outreach and a lot of other work and teaching and so on. Mm. Um, only about 20% on average of mm. our income comes from, from the box office. So okay. it's, uh, but now that um, the, the, uh, all the concerts are available online. If you were a family of two or three or four and you had subscriptions, you come to all the concerts at a certain price, you cannot ask that price. We make it available for a couple of days mm. for subscription to, they can watch it, so they don't have to watch it at the time of the concert. They oh, can I watch see. It yeah, day yeah. Later, a couple, from the Thursday to the Sunday or the Monday morning, mm. it's available. But of course, oh, sorry, I just have to change a little bit for the sun here. Yeah. Um, but then um, the 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 problem is that you you cannot uh, expect. I mean, they will buy one ticket and the whole family will watch. Yeah. Uh, so our income from the box office is is a tenth of what it was. Oh, of so course. So yeah. in the end, it's not sustainable, and that is a yeah. big problem for us. Yeah. Uh, how do we? Um, how would you? Do we keep on the long run? How will we keep things sustainable? Mm. Uh, it's not possible uh, mm. to have online concerts. I've heard of orchestras um, that have done a whole concert, the same mm. cost plus the, the recording cost, and they sold 30 tickets. Maybe mm. uh, because we took 150 years since early Victorian times to develop. The concert where a thousand or one thousand five hundred people go to a concert, and they uh, they enjoy being together and applaud or give an encore or whatever, and then they go. There's a there's a break, uh, an interval. They all go for a glass of wine. They see their friends, and then they go for the second half, and they have the concert. And they all go home, and they all tell everybody what what the atmosphere was like in that concert hall. And in Europe and America, we've developed famously uh, all these concert concert life of each city, mm. concert and all the and and the Musikverein in Vienna. Mm. That's what people get used to, and it took 150 years for this model to develop. We cannot expect that in a couple of weeks we suddenly will go to another model where people sit in front of a of a, of a TV screen or a or a, mm. uh, a laptop or even a phone and enjoy a concert. So mm. obviously, uh, there's a long way to go mm. to follow that route, as you can And imagine. as you also uh, said, and, and many artists say, this is that, that energy from the audience that they um, yes. feel and that they can sense and that they miss so much, you know, to have that. They, yes, they, you walk into a hall and you feel the energy from mm. the audience and you play for them. And mm. uh, a recording is never the same. We, mm. as I've said, we have 
improved since last year in October. We've improved our recordings. We cannot afford the equipment of the Berlin Philharmonic. Uh, they're fantastic and they, they have, the quality is fantastic in the sound, but they've got, I'm sure, multi-million rand equipment mm. um, that's permanently in, 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 in the Philharmonie. And, and, and they they have edited and, and their uh, online concerts that they've had for you know the digital concert hall that mm -hmm. they've been running for quite a few years or a decade at least I, I guess uh, we can't, cannot compare with that but we got much better and better but mm -hmm. um, it's not the same as, mm -hmm. as a live concert. In, uh... But do you think that uh, now there will be this uh, combination of maybe? you know, doing the live con uh, the concerts or, or the live performances, but then also have the recording so that uh, because we uh, you, you must be so used to that, that 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 can be a well, double. Yeah. I, th I think the one positive thing that happened now is that we were forced to make these recordings and we are building up an archive of high quality yeah. performances that with in 100 or 200 years time, um, every, anybody say, oh, there's, there's, this is what the Cape Town Philharmonic Orchestra sounded like a hundred years ago, yeah. and this is exactly how they played. Yes, we, we do recording for recordings for, for all our, our as, as an archive, but now we have these video recordings of, mm. of the, uh, the concert life of Cape Town um, mm. in this age and during the so so. Fortunately, we we building up this this arsenal of of archive recordings, which mm. is which is perhaps good, and uh, we can go back to if they all end up um, in, on YouTube in the end, and we can't monetize from them, we can't get money from them. So mm. be it. Yeah, it was a, it, it was something, and then it's there for everybody to see for, for free. Um, mm. We will obviously try to monetize it now and try to get a little money on it. And uh, but if they, as I've said, if they end up in the end in a couple of years' time, all mm. free of charge for everybody to see, mm. I'll be happy. I yeah. yeah. But you it's never fun. know if they. You never know if somebody maybe in some country as sees this recording and decide for their next holiday they're going to South Africa to go and see yes, the Cape Town Philharmonic. <laughs> also, we, we our rec other recordings are going now online on Spotify and yeah. iTunes and all these things. And, and of course, the income is very small, but there's a yeah. possibility that it can snowball and it can get better. Exactly, yeah. So we, 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 um, we follow in that route. But yeah. in Cape Town, we we have to be realistic. We cannot compete. Although I'm sometimes astonished by the quality of um, of local musicians as well as visiting artists and visiting conductors, but uh, we do fantastic work. But we cannot in, in compete with mm. with London or Vienna or, or Berlin or New York. Mm. Uh, it's just not possible. We. Uh, mm. We have yeah. to be the best we can be for Cape Town. Um, yeah. And that's good enough for us. And we, I know that we're good and proud of what we do. Uh, so, so we cannot really compete because mm -hmm. the best orchestras are all available on YouTube for free yeah. or some of the paid channels that you can, you can see them. For a small fee, you can get fantastic work. But, mm -hmm. um, but, you like, but like you say, it's that uniqueness of your of your orchestra, you know, there's no no orchestra like that in the world. And that's many things in South Africa, uh, but that it is unique to South Africa, you know. And uh, but yeah, but Louis, I want to, on a lighter note, ask you, what did you do during lockdown? Did you have a hobby, or did you start some new project? Um, to be honest with you, I started to work from home yeah and um, and two things happened by two whippet dogs they just yeah. loved the fact that i'm working from home and that i can organize my day around not not really around them but they thought yeah. around them, and i can enjoy my garden uh yeah. so for me uh, but of course you mm. you work also 24 7. yeah if if if, if you hear an email coming in uh, at sort of eight o'clock on a Sunday night, maybe I'm just inquisitive to 
to let it be for or wait until Monday morning. You quickly see, oh, that's that's the email uh, you've yeah. been waiting for. And sometimes you say, well, it's easier to do it right now. So you write an answer to that email on a Sunday night. So you're never off, really. I mean, 24-7, it's the, the office and the orchestra has part of your become part, part of your life. Mm. Uh, I, I've, I've taken one a, a short while. I love photography, like yourself, and I, um, I'm, I'm quite involved in, in some of the uh, videos that we've done and the editing. So, and I took one little short week trip uh, in the little Karoo in, in South Africa, oh, okay. which is a very barren area but beautiful, and uh, and made some photo essays of that. But um, in a way. The moment you, you arrive at, at a guest house in a, in a small little town, um, you go on, you go immediately get to the Wi-Fi, you get online and you check what's happening at the office. <laughs> <laughs> I it's know a, what it's you mean. You just have to check and double check and, go yeah. and write articles and so on. But I, um, but all of us uh, reevaluated the way we work, the way our philosophy about uh, time, about mm. uh, value of, of little things, mm. uh, about music, um, in, 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 a, in a hustle or bustle of, a, of, of the time before the pandemic, uh, everything was had a different rhythm and a different tempo. Mm. And, um, and in a way, we didn't appreciate the small things, little things. Now mm. the fact that we cannot really, for a long time, we couldn't really have face-to-face uh, -face contact with family members and, and, mm. and friends. We had to um, um, uh, we had to make do on, on, on the um, uh, on the internet and on Zoom. Mm. And then you start realizing again how important it is to, to mm. invite people over for dinner. I'm not a mm. good cook, but <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> a small group of people, yeah. Yeah, but that is true. You know that that we've um, we've slowed down a little bit, and uh, yeah, and I think. Um, uh, do you have Sorry. the sun there in your? Uh, it was a, it was a cloudy day in Cape Town. This is a slither of sun. And now the sun is coming. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and as yeah, you know, a camera, a camera cannot. Your eye can make. Adaptations, but a camera lens cannot make the uh, the, 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 the difference between a, a shade and sun is, is too difficult for for that computer to no. work out. And you have these massive differences with just a little bit of sun on your face. Yeah. But I know this is the the um, the inconsistency that that I also have on Zoom is the the moment the light changes your whole uh, no. um, image change. Yeah, but it's true that you said that you know we've we've slowed down a little thought a little bit more and so you know brought things in in perspective and and i think it's wonderful that it's uh you know that and and also musicians here say to me the same thing that you say this hustle and bustle this constant you know never stopping and and always the next thing and and everybody's appointments were scheduled for the next two three years and that's you know that i must say one of the wonderful things is uh, if, if i want to arrange a board meeting or a staff meeting um i, I can send an invitation i can tell them next week that time and mostly they all say yes because they it's much they, easier Some, yeah. sometimes with a, with a board meeting or a difficult meeting it took weeks mm -hmm. before you can line up everybody's busy schedule where they were away or out of town now they're all available and you can say nine o'clock in the morning and they they're still at home and they can do it it's much yeah. easier to arrange meeting yeah they can do it even in their pajama pants yes <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You, you can you can quickly have sort of get up and shower uh, 15 minutes before your scheduled zoom meeting. yeah that's fantastic yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That, that's that's called freedom yes i know exactly yeah plan, plan for traffic to go to the office to do it yes so, yeah so. no that's true um now i know i spoke to a music teacher once and she said she knows when she uh you know when it's this online teaching and they're sort of lying on the chair and 
If God still got their pajamas on the children, then. <laughs> well, some of the on, online teaching is, diff, is it was difficult. Oh. Many of our musicians mm -hmm. uh, complained that it, when it comes to intonation, and you have to explain mm -hmm. and then play and listen and play and listen, uh, it was very, very. It's very difficult. Mm -hmm. It's very mm -hmm. challenging. Because, and, and I think that will change quickly because. The cameras on all laptops will become better, high quality. Yeah. Become, you'll see the new laptops will come out with excellent new cameras, much bigger, mm -hmm. much stronger, much lower uh, sort of light sensitive. Mm -hmm. The little microphones which catching my voice now will become better. The sound yeah. will become better. And very mm -hmm. soon, um, I mean, a couple of years ago, uh, we didn't even think of, 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 we didn't know of WhatsApp, but now you form, in the office, you form little WhatsApp groups, yeah. and it circulates a certain part of the office, and a certain mm. part of the orchestra to a little WhatsApp group, and you can do, get things done immediately. And yeah. um, radio interviews, people say to me, um, just answer, answer my WhatsApp on radio, and I do radio interviews, which they use on radio from WhatsApp now. Mm. Uh, amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, and, and like you say, you, we would never have thought of doing that uh, previously. Yeah. Um, but Louis, tell me, what is your wish for the future? What is your wish for when this is all over? Petra, I feel that uh, as long as we can um, get through this difficult stage, which I think, well, which I've mm. said is, uh, I honestly believe it's unsustainable um, in the long run. We use a, a little nest egg that we built up from a trust, endowment trust, and we've got a couple of uh, donors, individuals that are looking well, have looked us, uh, at us over the last um, year. The difficult part will actually start now because we, uh, we can't go back to them every year and say, listen, we've got... Uh, um, we need more and more and more every year. Mm -hmm. So we've worked out a sustainability program, and um, uh, we have uh, make a, uh, have a whole proposal which we call a recovery and a five-year recovery plan, because we have to get sort of make up for lost ground. Um, mm -hmm. We can't get there immediately, but it will take a bit of time. Um, we we need to get back where we were. Um, and we have to constantly develop. Um, in, the, in the pandemic year 2020, we had a 34 million rand budget, and we cut it to 20 million, which is a 42 percent. You know, mm -hmm. just to cut from your operating expenses, 42 percent was dramatic. I'm not really sure how we did it, but we did. Mm -hmm. um, uh, perhaps uh, in terms of, of European orchestras, that's not such a big budget, but for us. 30, 30 million or 32 million rand is mm. it's like 32 million euro for for, for a European orchestra. So yeah. it's it's yeah. it's the same to cut. It, it's the same proportion, mm. but that's not sustainable. And my wish for the for the future is that we can get back uh, time our way back to to where we were before the pandemic, and that we will be able to continue um, uh, very soon. We owe it to the young and eager musicians of Cape Town mm. and South mm. Africa, who deserve to have full-time positions and who deserve to use classical music and their talent as a way out of poverty, out of townships. Um, if we see the wonderful work all, work all over the world in a developing country like South Africa, um, uh, if you, if you see what they've done in Venezuela, I mean, all those orchestras and, and um, mm. the whole tradition where um, uh, Dudamel comes from and is mm. now sort of a world famous conductor. And that whole tradition, um, uh, we're in a similar situation. Mm. Um, and I think we can, and that's my wish, my real wish, that we will be back there uh, very mm. as soon as we can. Well, I think the work that you are doing is incredible because I think, you know, even one uh, musician that goes back in the township and can be a role model for, for the next generation or for the people around or for a family member. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think that is, that is a... Yeah. 
we have a specific group, a grassroots level group, because I think, you know, it's easy to, to want to play a trumpet or a trombone or something mm. that makes a sound uh, impressive. But it takes quite a few years to, to make a sound on a, on a string instrument that sounds like anything. Oh, yeah. So you have to start much younger. So we've got a group, um, uh, out of, sort of a, a grassroots training group called Mazit Lardley. Mazit mm. Lardley is the causal word for let's play together. Uh, oh, so that's been going on since 2009. So we, we're going on, on our 12th year. Um, very successful. We start with five and six year old kids. Oh, the interesting okay. thing is that you, you cannot teach a child a, a, to play the violin. I and mean, we start with the Suzuki method, but they very soon need to read music as well. And you can't speak the language. You can't teach them in English or any other language. You have to start, use a and, and empower a young causal playing um, uh, violinist who can teach them in, initially in causal. Oh, I see. They, yeah. think they start to understand English, so they can they can imitate you on the violin, just play. But you have to explain what to do, and you have to be able to speak their language. That was mm -hmm. a new challenge, but in a, it it was also fortunate that uh, meeting that uh, uh, challenge was empowering young uh, musicians, calls of speaking musicians, to be able to do that, to, to oh, become yeah, a teacher yeah. and make a career out of, of teaching in the townships to the very young ones. But you see, this is also a, a thing that uh, so, uh, you know, that we also don't realize, but that, like you say, that language barrier that, um, that has to be overcome as well. Yeah. No, that's very interesting. But I think you're doing wonderful work, and uh, and uh, I, I would I, love to. I've got a wonderful team of people working as hard or harder than I am, and, and supporting, and, mm. uh, and a wonderful board of directors. They're extremely. They all they all voluntary, and they don't get paid for what they do, but they're passionate about it. Amazing. Um, and, mm. uh, and my team members at the. In, in the We've got a small administration staff and they work extremely hard and they're passionate about it as well. Mm. And then we've got all the talented young musicians of all ages. Well, I'm, I'm going to well, I watch what you post on, on Facebook um, and see what the orchestra is doing. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and it would be wonderful to, to see in the future, you know, and, and coming out of this lockdown, what will happen. Thank you. Yeah.